Whoa, I forgot my lunch. And then my grandson and daughter, David, and my daughter, Sarah, they brought me some food. Woo, isn't that kind? I got lunch now. And a bagel and an apple. Whoa. Don't forget to eat your yogurt. Oh. Oh. No. All right, you guys, thanks for being here. Let's go. So we're left off where I made a mistake, but we fixed it. And that was uh, number seven. So just be careful there with your minus symbols. It's an easy thing to do. So then, ooh. Then, oh, got to divide by two on these. Remember, divide by two. And then, after you divide by two, you have to send that 13 away. 13 halves, wow. And then take the B, divide by two, and square it. Don't forget to do the, how to do that. And so divide by two and square it. So we get some. Um, Negative 6 squared is 36. So you're going to add 36 and you're going to minus 36, right? Let you finish that one off. Let you finish that one off. That was an x squared. Good. After you combine the 13 halves with the negative 36, um, don't forget you have to distribute the 2 back through, so don't forget that part. That'll change your uh, C value, definitely. Cool. So, but this, uh, no, this assignment is actually command with the quadratic equations given a few coordinates or points on the graph. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. So if you have, um, ooh, so you want to look and see what kind of points you have. Look at number nine. So number nine, we have one zero and seven zero. And those are both the x-intercepts. And since those are the x-intercepts, what does that mean? What kind of form? Yeah, we're going to do factored form. Well, so the answer for number nine is factored form. I'll let you guess at what number 10 might be. And then number 11, we have the maximum point. And so a maximum point would be the, what's that called? At, oops, it's actually, it's actually down here at um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, down there. So that's called a minimum or a maximum. Oh, so that's a maximum. That's actually going down. So that's a maximum. You get the idea. And so what is that called? What is that called? So if you have a maximum point and it's going downwards, that's called the vertex. So a maximum point is actually the vertex. So then you would use the vertex form. And if you have three random points, then that would just be the standard form. Let's see here, use the graphing calculator to determine the quadratic equation. For each of the three points, the line on a parabola, use quadratic regression. Way oh. So all you gotta do is use your graphing calculator. If you don't have a graphing calculator, um, then you can always use, um, let's see, so close. So it's called sagecalc.com, S-A-G-E. CALC.com, and that will actually let you do the things that we've been learning right now with this built-in graphing calculator. And then use mine in class during the test, or rent one, buy one, because you'll need it for Unit 3. You'll need it for Unit 3. Okay, so let's go back here. And so we'll use our graphing calculator. You're going to hit the stat button, stat. You're going to go to edit, so just push the number 1, or enter, or push enter. And then you have to clear your list. So go up to L1, clear and enter. Over up to L2, push clear and enter. There we go. So let's go ahead and help you. Let's see, well, I'll let you practice on number 12. Let's help you on number 13. So the list one will be the x values. 
So 2, 0, and negative 1. 2, 0, negative 1. And then list 2 will be the y values. So that's uh, list 2 will be the negative 3, negative 1, and 3 halves. And then you just run a linear regression on it and get the, get the equation. Okay, so again, list 1 is um, 2, push enter to go to the next line. So 2, enter, 0, enter, and negative 1, enter. Good. And then for list 2, you're going to type in a negative 3, enter, a negative 1, enter. And then 3 divided by 2 gives you 3 halves. 3 divided by 2 gets you 3 halves, 1.5. Okay, so now we've got our list. Now we can run a linear regression. That easy. So go back to the stat button. Stat. Go right arrow over to calc, calc, and then go down to quad reg. So go down to quad reg. There it is, quadratic regression. Push enter. Make sure it's the right list that you typed your data into. If that's list one, list two, or list two, list three. If you need to double check, go back to stats. Look at your data. We did use list one and list two. So back to stats, over to calc, linear quad regression, and list one, list two. I'm going to show you something new now. The new thing I'm going to show you is, let's say you want to graph it. It's a word problem. You want to graph it. You can actually store it into the y equals. And how you do that is vars, right arrow to y vars, and then there's function, enter, and y1, enter. So now it'll actually store it ready to graph if you need it. If you push calculate, boom. And so that gives us our answer for number 13. Well, so there we go. There's our answer for number 13. And so now we go ahead and write that down, our answer, our A, B, and C. Remember, you got to put it in standard form. So what's standard form? Y equals AX squared plus bx plus c, and so our a is a 0.5, so then we go y equals 0.5, which is the same as 1 half, and then we go x squared plus our b value next, which is um, negative 2, so you could erase the plus if you wanted to, up to you, and then you have minus 2x, and then the c value is minus 1. And there you go. Using our quadratic regression, we found our calculator. We found our answer there. And so that's our answer for number 13. Change any decimal answers into fractions. And then, so we'll practice on number 14. Try it again. So we go back to stat, back to edit. Oh, let's show you the y equals. So it actually took the equation, look, 0.5 um, x squared. Plus a negative plus a negative two x plus a negative two x lots of zeros and then minus one and you can graph it. Wait, oh, there's your graph. Zoom six. There's our graph of the equation we just found. Okay, so back to stat. Edit our data. We're going to clear our list and try number fourteen. I think 14 gets kind of crazy. So 14 is um, negative 1, enter, 0, enter, and 2, enter. And then list 2 is uh, negative 10, 6, and 88. And then again, we go to stats, over to calc, then we do quad regression, enter. There's our list 1, list 2. We can store it in there if we want to. Well, let's get our answer. Holy cow, that's a crazy answer, right? How do we turn those into not decimals anymore? Well, we have 8.3333 and 24.3333 and then 6. So let's go ahead and convert those into fractions. And so how we do that is we type that number in. So that's going to be um, 8.3333. And then we actually push enter. And then you hit the math button and you go to turn into a fraction. So that's option one, frac. 
So then we go, there it is, and it didn't work. What the heck? Well, that's lame. Let's try more threes, I guess. I don't know. Should be able to turn that into a fraction. Isn't it like eight and one third? There we go. I just need more threes, huh? So that's 25 thirds. So our A value is 25 thirds. Our B value, use lots of threes now. And then we go math frac, math frac. 73 thirds, wow. Okay, here's our crazy answer for number 14. So we get y is equal to 25 thirds x squared plus b is 73 thirds x and then plus 6. And there's our answer. So you practice number 12 now and plug it into Canvas. way -oh. Here we go. Okay, so number 15 says, write an equation of the quadratic function, and they give us two x-intercepts and a point on the graph. So the point on your graph is your x and y, and then r1 and r2 is your x-intercepts. So we're going to use the um, factored form, which is a times x minus r1 times x minus r2. That's our factored form. And wherever we see an x, we're going to plug in a negative 4 there as well as there. And then our, our x-intercepts, we're going to plug there and there. And last but not least, the y, we're going to plug in there. And solve for a. Solve for a. So we get negative 9 is equal to a times x, which is negative 4, minus r1, which is negative 7, times... Again, x is negative 4 minus r2, which is 5, x-intercept of 5. And now we simplify. Negative times negative is a positive, so negative 4 plus 7 is 3. Bring down our a, bring down our negative 9, times negative 4 and negative 5 is negative 9. And negative 9 and positive 3 is a negative 27. That's a big number, equals negative 9. And now we're going to go ahead and divide that negative 27 over to the other side. Way oh. And so that can reduce, right? Negative divided by negative is a positive. And 9 divided by 9 is 1. And 27 divided by 9 is 3. So we get a positive 1 third for the A value. So now we get our final answer, y is equal to our a value, which is 1 third times x minus r1, which was negative 7, and x minus our r2 value, which is 5. And then don't forget that a negative times a negative is a positive. And so there is the equation of our graph. Solving for A first, then plugging it back in with the two x-intercepts gives us our factored form, gives us our equation. We found the equation. Way -o. So go ahead and watch with our last video there. Thanks for watching. See you in our last video. Bye for now.